Elvis can get me my retrial. It's happening. Bring Bray with the man. I'm gonna go talk to him. He ain't interested. I think I'm lying about Marie. What this did to her. She's still on your team in a big way. You flipped to save yourself. You owe him. The estate's witness cannot be located. How is that possible? What's happening, YouTube world? I am back doing my reviews of For Life. This is season one, episode seven. And so much is so the life of an African-American male. They set the finish line one place, and right when you about to cross it, they extend it further. That's what it's starting to feel like with Aaron Wallace and his quest to get his freedom. We'll break down this episode and what happened on this quest for Aaron to try to get closer to his freedom. If you're finding me for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on notifications so when I drop videos, you get them. Follow me on Instagram too. Subscribe to me on Instagram. Send me your messages about TV shows, movies, news, everything that we do on Life Games channel. Send them to me on Instagram so I can try to cover them. Let's dive on into this. This was a pretty good episode. Um, again, Aaron Wallace has finally got the documentation he needs to try to get him another trial. They done moved 50 Cent. His character is Cassius Dawkins to this particular cell unit to create mischief and mayhem for the warden. The warden is still being somewhat of a kind-hearted warden, but as Aaron keeps doing his thing, she's seemingly getting in more and more events with him. And we start out by Aaron having to defend a character in jail whose wife is dying of cancer. And now the warden, God bless her little heart, has decided that she is gonna put in play family conjugal visits. But when she decided to do this, it puts her wife at odds with the people backing her campaign because her wife is still running for district attorney. And the people backing her campaign do not like that the warden is trying to have a heart for the people that she's overseeing in this jail. And they come to her saying, you need to change this, you need to fix it. And of course the wife is down her back saying you need to fix it. And this all culminated with the warden and her wife in a scene where their son got expelled from school because he was stealing and it didn't look right and they got it on social media. And the warden's wife wasn't having it, but the warden was just like, you know what, this happens. You know, we don't need to use our privilege to try to get him out of this. And so it seems as though everything was going okay until later on down in the episode, and we'll come back to that. At first, Aaron didn't really want to take the inmate's case until he saw the inmate hugging the future wife when he was talking to his attorney who's been helping him with all the outside facts and things that Aaron needs to try to get his case going. And that really touched Aaron's heart. Now see, this is what happened to us African-Americans. You know, we're trying to come up the ladder oftentimes and we wind up having a heart for things that people should have been damn had a heart for in the past, but they haven't. So Aaron has a heart. He sees how much this man loves his dying wife, his dying wife to be, and he goes and takes his case, takes it to trial. And in the midst of taking that case to trial, he has to bump back a part of a case for his own trial that they had to put to another day. And so let's go ahead and talk about his case. In, his, in the case he did for the guy trying to see his wife and marry his wife in prison, he won that. And it was a great story. He had to put the warden on the stand and he had to act like he was really jabbing at the warden, which he was, which made it look good for her in the publicity. But at the same time, it wind up winning the case. So now this man can marry his wife, his one of his last dying wishes. And he ultimately asked Aaron to be the best man in his wedding because no one had ever done something so nice for him. And I thought that was a great story. But in the midst of all that, Aaron's case got pushed back. And now it's not up in the air because throughout this whole thing, we learned that the police that staged the coup of Aaron in his nightclub, they had a CI who was basically a paid CI and it was one of the homeboys working with Aaron. And in one of his previous cases, he had done something wrong. 
and dropped the ball. And Aaron had all this information that he was going to present to the judge. But now, because that case was supposed to take place during the day when Aaron was helping this other inmate, now they got this up in limbo. And I'm just like, man, damn. Every time this brother gets closer and closer to getting his freedom, they found a way to kick the can down the road. But y'all can cool believe he's going to get his justice. Because now that he's got his case file, he knows that the district attorney was dirty. He knows that they had an inside plant that was paid who was crooked in another case. You can cool believe Aaron is going to get his justice. And then throughout this other, the other part of this thing, um, Aaron's wife, who is dating Darius, and they are still actively trying to help Aaron. Believe it or not, Darius is still trying to actively help Aaron. They go to one of the guys that was helping Aaron to say, I need th that, put Aaron in jail, excuse me. They go to him and say, look, we need you to help Aaron because one of the CIs was crooked. At first, dude comes to the door with his Rottweiler acting all hard, but he eventually turns tail. So this was also going to help Aaron in his plight to get his freedom back. But a fly in the ointment that happened was Marie's father, takes a trip. First of all, Marie's father shows up at Marie's house just begging her to leave Aaron alone. And when she's like, nah, I still love him, he leaves her house, says he's going home, but winds up in the prison to see Aaron and basically coerces Aaron to leave the daughter alone. And at the end of the episode, we see Marie go to see Aaron and Aaron has the divorce paperwork that he's ready to sign and give to her but did y'all see the look on her face, the pain look on Marie's face? She still loves this man. Now, of course, Darius is in her ear saying, you need to sign the paperwork. The father's in her ear saying, you need to cut this dude alone. But what is in her heart? We know that her daughter still loves her father. And we know that deep down, Marie is still holding on to hope that Aaron is going to get out. The question comes, is she going to go through with the divorce paperwork? And the other good thing that happened in this episode that I really loved, even though the warden had all this pressure put on her not to have a family unit, a concierge unit, a conjugal visit unit for the inmates, after Aaron won that case for the inmate whose wife was dying and he was able to let them get married in prison, the warden went on ahead and she made conjugal visits a thing at this place. Now we gotta talk about 50 Cent and the war that's going on with him. So now that 50 Cent is in this particular correctional unit, he is taking over, whereas you had the Aryan Nation and their crew that formerly was taking over. And Aaron knows that Frank Foster, the captain of the police force at that unit, is bringing drugs in there and doing drug dealings with the Aryan Nation. And he wants in on that. 50 Cent ain't playing. He's coming there to take over that jail. He wants to take over the drug game in that jail, and he knows that this particular crooked cop is doing it. Did y'all see how 50 Cent had his hitters go to Frank Foster's family and hold them hostage? And 50 ain't playing. And now 50 has also taken Aaron's burner phone and said, it's mine. And now 50 has his whole bodyguards and everybody accepting people coming to see him, including Aaron. And so, ladies and gentlemen, this show is getting really good. It is a diabolical mismatch that shows the plight of a great protagonist being Aaron as he's fighting for his freedom. He's fighting with all these elements in jail that are keeping him from his freedom. And then he's also trying to help other inmates, which boosts his story and his morale, helps him practice getting ready for his own case. And when you throw 50 Cent up in there trying to hemrod everybody, it makes for great entertainment. I mean, this is a good story, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys are watching. Let me know what I missed. Let me know how much you've enjoyed this series. And I will possibly be back doing more of this next week, just depending upon how you guys respond to it. That's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like my video. Please comment, subscribe. Go get yourself that life game. Follow me on Instagram. Follow the podcast, and until that next sexy as hell review, I'll see you.